Alright, what is going on, lovely ladies and gentlemen? I don't have many things to talk about today because I have a lot to talk about, about a very few things. And so the first one is going to be CEO, the most recent uh, major that occurred, you know, the big major before EVO. A lot of very impressive shit happened there this weekend, and it was very, very cool. I hope you enjoyed Street Fighter, because honestly, that Street Fighter tournament was one of the uh, most exciting, had some of the most exciting matches I've ever seen, and it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, who was there, who was doing what, the matches were just amazing, regardless of who you were rooting for, and I'll get into that, obviously, more later. Uh, then we're going to talk about a, a little bit about the Capcom Fighters stream. Plenty about EVO. Mr. Wizard has released the official numbers for each game, so I'm going to talk about those and also, you know, break them down. Well, not really break them down, but I'm going to talk about them. And finally, the Arc System... Decisions of Arc System Works. Battle Fantasia Revised Edition. Alright, so firstly, CEO. I mean, it really is just... You can't really talk about CEO without talking about the hypest part, which was Street Fighter. Um, unfortunately, there was a little bit of, you know, badness involved. With, you know, the amazing matches kind of got overshadowed a little bit by things that, you know, I'm certainly not the only one of this opinion of this whole national pride thing that's, like, always been a part of, yeah, America's beating Japan, woo! And it's just, like, this isn't... A fucking team tournament like this was a team tournament where it's team japan versus team america fucking do it not even team america team usa uh fuck you know usa usa Ooh, do that it's team usa this isn't team usa this is 1v1 everyone's out for blood there is no national pride here there's no oh i'm fighting for country fuck no them people are fighting for themselves why are people rooting for USA in the middle of it? But now here's the problem. Like, I mean, that did irk me a little. It irks me a little bit because there's no logical basis behind it. There's no national pride to be had there. There's no real, like, I mean, sure, take pride in the fact that this is a dude that you know that is quality, that is beating up these people that you don't know. Take pride in that. But don't turn it into some whole national pride thing where there's none to be had. And... But then, on the opposite side of it, like, the people who took it too far. Like, there's people that take it too far in one direction. People that, you know, are booing players that aren't uh, American when they win. People that will go on and be like, yo, fuck Japan. America's the best. You have people like that. On the flip side, you also have the people who are so caustic when it comes to their reaction to that that like they just do a complete 180 and instead of you know just being like yo dude dial it back a bit you know get hype enjoy the matches but don't turn it into some us versus them kind of a deal enjoy the game for the game and but then again they spin it around and they're just as bad if not worse than the people they're trying to say like yo you guys are being stupid right now and so, you know, they're just like, man, fuck America. That's what you get, bitches. And it's just like, what, how do you not understand that you are the opposite side of the same coin in this situation? You are exactly what you are trying to, like, insult right now. You are the exact same thing. It's ridiculous to see. I hate seeing that, and I really hope to God that uh, nobody that listens to me and enjoys me uh, would do that kind of thing because damn I hate it so much it irks me like it's just I just don't there's no logical basis and that's the entire thing that I'm coming from is like it's all just logic right like how do you not understand from a logical standpoint that you are exactly what you are trying to hate on right now and that ugh, but I even wrote that down like I was kind of at the because of how prevalent the whole you know usa usa chanting was i was just sitting there like you know what kind of hope kazunoko wins at this point just because this is dumb and a lot of people bring it out like yo you don't see the japanese people doing this but let's be perfectly honest two entirely different cultures japanese people in general like the entire country is basically bred and raised to be very withdrawn very humble uh not really show emotions not really display emotions and so that's why you know 
you see things like Daigo and everybody always talks about how calm he is but that's every single Japanese player they're all like just super chill they're very calm and that's their culture they're not basically like anything that brings attention to yourself is looked down upon in Japan almost and that's why you have so much of this like why like the cl behind closed doors the freakiness that can occur there is such like a prevalent part of its what's shown to the outside world because they don't really have anything I mean it's just I, I don't want to get into it because I'm certainly not going to talk like I'm some master like I'm, I have a huge understanding a deep understanding of Japanese culture but that's how they are in general that's how the Asian cultures generally are they're very withdrawn and they don't really display a lot of emotion so you're comparing apples to oranges right now in that the culture they are in really kind of dissuades people from the whole pop-off thing whereas you know within America excitement is everywhere you got people getting rabid over sports people get rabid over just about anything people will get rabid over goddamn fantasy football let alone real football and you know it's, just, it's part of the culture right like the pop-offs are just it's a thing that Americans do and so you have to understand, like, you can't compare the two. You can't say, like, yo, you never see the Japanese people doing this, so we shouldn't do it. Hell no! Pop-offs are exciting as hell! Get hype! Enjoy yourself! But don't make, like I said, just don't make it an us versus them kind of a thing. That's what pisses me off the most is you kind of, like, you kind of make them feel excluded. And, you know, these are people that are coming over that, honestly, you should be excited to be able to play against. These are some of the best players in the world that are traveling to your country. You can learn from them, you can improve from them, and just how much, uh, how large the benefit is for them coming to your tournaments. But then to make them feel like they're not welcome, like they're the enemy, and you're just kind of like, why the fuck would they come back? Like, that's the only reason they're coming back right now, Capcom Pro Tour. There's, the money's there. That's the only reason, and you, I mean, honestly, it works for them, right? Like, now they don't have any qualms whatsoever in taking your money. Like, it's not, you know, feeling bad, like, ah, man, these guys were so nice to me, they were so chill, I kind of feel bad for taking all their prize money, but hey, money in the bank! But instead, it's like, you yeah, man, fuck these guys, hell yeah, I'll take their money. <laughs> I want all of it! Money match me, I'll take your tournament money, I'll take your pocket money, I'll take your goddamn lunch money! Let's go! And so, you know, kind of helps them out, I guess. J takes away any kind of like, man, I really like this guy and I don't really want to take his money. Like, hell no, I saw you chanting USA. Come here, bro. <laughs> Put your money on the table. I'll fight you. Uh, But yeah, it's still, I mean, it really is. It's just a thing that we're like, it's kind of silly to think of it as a national pride thing, as a USA thing, because like, all of the kind of pockets of competition in the country are really divided like you know and it's just it's a simple thing most of the people that are playing fighting games really aren't exactly rolling in the money you know you can't really argue that there's a bunch of people that are making above average income that are a part of the FGC and of course there are people that are but a lot a huge amount of the FGC is basically college students who don't really have anything better to do with their time like it's just you know I'm in college this is my hobby once I get an actual job, once I, uh, you know, start moving along in my life, I'm gone. That's what happened with the anime community. Pretty much everybody got a life, and they're gone. And the same thing happens all the time with Street Fighter. There's been plenty of people that have moved on. Uh, fortunately, you know, Street Fighter has a very strong background, and people like Alex Valle, uh, what is his name, Mike Watson, uh, people like uh, Henry from uh, that does Next Level Battle Circuit, Spooky, you know, there's a, these people that have been up that Street Fighter fighting games in general have basically been their lives, and so even though they do obviously have their own jobs on the side, they are still very involved in kind of keeping everything together and running. But ultimately, you know, a huge amount of kind of you know the local competition that you'll find is basically just teenagers, high school students, college students that this is their hobby they need something to do when they're not in class when they're not doing homework and so this is what they do and once you know once that period of their life passes they're gone too um and so it's not like there's not i don't even know where the hell i was going with that but it's just it's so weird to attribute national pride to something that there really isn't like kind of a national cohesion to the entire scene people to, oh that's right because 
talking about how they're all basically students. So they're not going to be traveling all over the country. They're not going to be visiting other scenes. They don't really know. I mean, there are people now. More and more people are starting to travel around to majors. But aside from that, like, the communities are very split. There's no, you know, it's not like you're getting to, again, if you were getting together the dream team and you were doing a team tournament, like a, a Capcom Cup has team tournaments a lot where, you know, it's team uh, Canada, team Europe, team Asia, or I don't even think they've done team Asia. I think it's always been like team Japan and then team Korea or, you know, whatever. Anyway, if you have something like that, by all means, get your national pride going and cheer for your country. But when it's one-on-one, -on -one, everybody's out for blood. It's every man for themselves. There's no national thing going in there. There's no, you know, flag waving to be had. It's everyone for themselves. So, I mean, it just, it, it obviously, plenty of people have talked about how they don't like, they didn't like that. Uh, the commentary was a very biased toward the USA during it and a lot of people have expressed their displeasure regarding it and I didn't think it had really any place in the commentary but I'm not the one that determines who commentates so that's kind of irrelevant uh but still it's kind of the other thing that really amused me about the Street Fighter tournament was how there was a bunch of doom and gloom kind of surrounding people's character choices you know how you have people like Justin Wong and Ricky Ortiz who are character loyalists toward uh Rufus and I mean, basically saying, you know, Americans need to stop picking what they want to play, and they need to start picking characters to win. And that's, it's just, you know, just hearing this, there was a very in-depth, long discussion in various places regarding that, about how being a character loyalist isn't enough anymore. You know, if you want to hang with the big boys, you gotta pick to win, you gotta pick top tier. And so that it was kind of incredible. Number one, Mago's putting in... Meanwhile, while this discussion is being had, Mago is putting in all the fucking work in the world with Yang, who is a strong character, but I don't think anybody argues that he's top tier. And Mago's busting asses with him. And then you get to this top three, and obviously, you know, it kind of hurts the point a little bit that the young player won. But in this top three, you got a young player, the young player. Like, who else puts in work with Yun? Nobody has ever even come close to the quality of Kazunoko. And so, I mean, you can't even really argue like, ah, he won because of a top tier character. Hell no. Kazunoko won because Kazunoko godlike. But still, in the top three, you have a young player, an able player, and a Balrog player. Those are two characters out of the three in top three of one of the biggest tournaments of the year that nobody would argue is top tier. And some would even argue, I'm pretty sure a lot of people argue that Balrog is very weak. And that Abel, I mean, Abel's the kind of character that, like, he's weak, but he can run a train on you at any time, too. Like, if he gets going, he's going, and there's no stopping him. He's, he's that kind of a character. He's very momentum-based. But it's just, it's kind of difficult to get that momentum going in the first place with him. Um... But again, like, there's no way anybody's going to argue Abel is a weak character, but I don't think anybody argues that he's a top-tier character either. And so it's kind of funny that, you know, after this huge in-depth conversation about how everybody thinks Justin needs to be sticking with Rose or Elena, uh, Ricky needs to start picking... Uh, I think Rose was also something that was in the lines for Ricky. Uh, I know Ricky's also played Chun-Li in the past, but it's still just, like, everybody talking about how, you know, people need to switch these characters... Let's talk about people. one of the people that was the most outspoken in regard to this. Sanford Kelly. How is picking different characters working out for you? Just going to throw that out there. How good are you doing against Smug, who is not picking different characters, is not picking a top tier character, and is annihilating you week after week after week? And yet he was one of the most outspoken ones. I think he was actually the one that started the conversation about how Americans need to start picking top tier and it's just like bruh if you are the example for us to be taking this from what have you done in street fighter like i'm sorry sam kelly's a godlike player he'd obviously blow me the fuck up but he's losing to the exact opposite of what he's preaching about he is losing to the thing that he says we should not do okay it's a wonderful point made. Way to back it up. And so that that was just really amusing to me. And obviously Smug tore that tournament up. And he, the only players he lost to, the guy that won the tournament, 
and PR Balrog, who was on a fucking tear all weekend long. He was damn near unstoppable. And he even said, like, he had a chance to win that last match, but he freaked out because I guess uh, I Peru was saying to do uh, EX Tour. That started a whole shitstorm, too, about whether or not coaches should be allowed. Personally, I am of the argument that coaching should not be allowed. I would not... Uh, I mean, number one, personally for me, like, just looking at it from me, I would not want to coach because they would just be distracting me. I would just be like, dude, shut the fuck up. Just let me play my game. Just shut your damn mouth. <laughs> coach me after the match. Right now, shut up. I got shit to do. But I understand why people do want coaches, but that it creates a scenario like that where you can even set up stuff like that where basically PR Balrog said because he, he EX headbutted at the end because he heard I Peru say... EX tornado throw. Do an EX command grab. And so, you know, he's thinking, oh, okay, he's gonna listen to I Peru. Let me throw this out now in reaction to that. And that that's not that's a fault of PR Balrog for allowing himself to be distracted by that and not really playing with his gut. But still it allows a coach can just do that. Can just say whatever the fuck they want, can just, you know, pre plan it like, dude, don't listen to a fucking word I say. I am just going to be here to try to get into his head. Don't even listen to anything I say. Play your game, I'm gonna fuck with him. And coaches can completely do that. Easily. I know I would get fucked if I heard somebody talking over a game plan and then I was just like, oh, well, shit, if he's going to start doing that, then I need to start reacting in this way and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's going to fuck my head up. So I completely understand the argument against coaches. And like I said, personally, I would say no coaching. I think uh, it's unnecessary, number one. And again, it's too easy to fuck with somebody. So that was a big thing, too. But yeah, I mean... PR Balrog was going fucking bonkers all weekend long. He was damn near unstoppable. So for Smug to lose to those two players, not not a shame at all. Like that was he did amazingly. He did phenomenally. Uh, but anyway, so that's enough about Street Fighter. Like I said, Street Fighter was just it was amazing. Uh, obviously, all the videos are up on Team Spooky if you want to check any of the matches out. Um, but still, Persona 4 Arena that was another big story. Oh my god, Soji, one of the best Persona 4 Arena players, falls to Banana Ken. Oh shit. And I'll be perfectly honest, I never would have called that. I would have just said, nah, Soji's going to run train on everybody. And he didn't. Soji lost. Kudos to Banana Ken. Don't like Banana Ken because he's a Kokonoi player. And fuck Kokonoi, you bandwagoning bitch. But anyway, <laughs> uh, still, I mean, kudos to him for taking that tournament. And he was definitely the underdog there. I don't think anybody would have called that. I don't think anybody would have bet against Soji. Um, maybe that's what he did. Soji took the odds and was like, you know what? I'm going to take a fall right before Evo. Now watch him come out with a vengeance. And that's always the argument, too. You know, you always, people are always wondering, yo, is this dude sandbagging or not? And I kind of hate that. I hate the concept of it because people do sandbag. People absolutely do sandbag. You see Smug do it all the time at Next Level Battle Circuit. Like, he will, uh,. Especially, and it especially amusingly happens against Sanford Kelly. You can tell that he's not playing at his fullest. He's not doing the things he usually does when Sanford, like, picks a new character on him. And it's just, I'm seeing the process. I'm like, yo, let him think that this kind of works. Let him waste time trying to master this character when there's no way in hell he's going to beat me with him. But I'm going to make it look like he has a shot at it. And that's the kind of thing, you know, a lot of people are saying. Some people sandbag before the big tournament. And so when the big tournament comes around, you're not expecting them to come out and just annihilate you. But from the comp I mean, again, I have no idea whether or not he did that. I'm obviously not trying to take anything away from Banana Kid. He played extremely well, and I respect his use of Shadow Labyrinth. Shadow Labyrinth is a really uh, enjoyable character to watch and a very good character. And so I definitely, you know, it's not like Kokonoi where it's just like, yo, your character's carrying you the entire way through. What's impressive about this? Shadow Labyrinth is not the strongest character. She's very good, but she's not the best. Uh, so anyway, very respectable showing by him. And so I'm certainly not trying to take anything away and be like, ah, Soji's obviously sandbagging. Banana Ken's not good enough. I have no idea. I can't tell if Soji's sandbagging or not. I don't know enough about him as a player. And I really don't know enough about the game to be able to tell whether or not somebody's sandbagging. Um, but that's all. that always enters the argument, right? Like, people are always so dismissive of it. Like, why can't you just respect this motherfucker's abilities and just, like... Yes, he can totally beat him on his best day, and he won! And congratulations to him! Why you gotta be like, yo, Soji sandbagging? Soji planning ahead for Evo? And again, it's the competitive mindset from the very start of me is already, like, extremely disrespectful of that fact. Because it's like, always play your fullest. 
fuck sandbagging? Why would you sandbag? Play to your utmost. Would you ever see... I mean, I guess it kind of takes away from it, like... I was going to use sports as a reference, but there are times, like, pretty much any All-Star game, like the NFL Pro Bowl, the NBA All-Stars, they're always sandbagging in that shit because they always don't want to, they don't want to injure themselves in an irrelevant game, but still, it's like, you see a competitor, some of the best competitors in the world, do you think they would ever sandbag, like, in a game before to make it so, like, it counts when they're, when they're in the championships? Fuck that. Hell no. And even then, you don't want, I like, it just, it irritates me to think about because it's like... If you play your best, then this person's going to have to play their best to keep up with you. And so now you're both going to improve because you're both playing at your utmost rather than just like you kind of getting into a rut. And honestly, sandbagging can backfire completely because it turns you start going autopilot. And then like before you know it, you're gone. Like you've lost. It's done. And so, but just the, the concept of that really irritates me. So I truly hope that there wasn't any sandbagging there because I do not respect it in the least from a competitor standpoint um but anyway so that that's enough about ceo let's talk about capcom fighters for a minute i don't know why i never realized this but it like it just occurred to me they only ever show street fighter capcom does not give two fucks about marvel like why would they like it's just it's not even like okay you know let team spooky get his shit in when it comes to marvel but they have never even like acknowledged Marvel exists on that channel. It really is just super. I, I don't want to get in depth on this. I don't want to get into all conspiracy theory and shit. But it's just it's so weird. Like this is your game, man. Like hype it up a bit. I know that the hype is basically gone because you know everybody's kind of settled into their top tierness, and it's not really exciting to watch anymore because it's like lightning loops, Morrigan, you know, bullet hell. And occasionally a Wolverine and then Dark Virgil with Doom Assist. Welcome to Marvel. And that, that fuck, it's, just, it's so boring. Everybody knows what they're looking at. Everybody knows what they're watching. It's just, you know, whatever. And uh, it shows. It really shows because now to segue into the Evo numbers, uh, Marvel is the actually pretty much smack in the middle. It's But it's below Mortal, both Mortal Kombat X and Guilty Gear Xod in terms of entrance, which... It used to always, oh, until Smash came, or Smash always beat it. But it was always the only other game, aside from Smash, that, you know, it would it would always have the highest population, aside from Street Fighter. Obviously, Street Fighter's gonna have it. So, anyway, the numbers that uh, Mr. Wizard released was that Street Fighter 4 has 2,227 entrants. Smash for the Wii U has 1,926. Melee has 1,869. Mortal Kombat X, far below that, 1,162. Guilty Gear is very close to 1,000, has 968. And then Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 has 816. And then it goes down again. Holy God. Tekken, now Tekken 7. Tekken 7 isn't even out for the majority of the world. Is it? No. Well, does Tekken 7 even have, like, it's not even going to be officially released by then, is it? I don't think so, like... They must be coming... Wow. Like, they must be having special builds solely for Evo, because that's not out yet, as far as I'm aware. Maybe it'll come out, like, a week beforehand. But, I mean, that definitely would explain the low interest. Like, obviously, Tekken was never... 3D fighters, in general, have never reached the popularity of 2D fighters. But still, they only have 458 entrants. But, again, it's a game that's not even out yet. It's a game that... Uh, I think, actually, a lot of Tekken, pe uh, Tekken people are not terribly happy about because they're um they think it's been dumbed down too much like it's been casualized too much which is obviously always an argument nowadays that whether or not a series has been casualized in order to appeal to a mass uh to just appeal to the masses to get more sales and then at the uh cost of alienating its core crowd its core fan club and uh most of the time it's overblown a lot of the times it's kind of completely untrue and it's just you know snap judgments made right from the get-go before you really get to delve into a game so who knows obviously i don't know a damn thing about tekken so i can't comment on any of that or the truth the validity of such statements but it is an argument that's out there right now i know it is like I, i've heard a lot of people even if they're not against it they said you know like oh they're very obviously trying to uh kind of dial the difficulty back that's inherent in trying to get into this series in order to bring in new blood because the game i mean let's be honest it needs new blood 
Tekken's never really in conversations when it comes to fighting games in the United States. 3D fighters in general kind of aren't like... Dead or Alive, I think, has a pretty solid, like, casual following, but very little in the tournament community. Uh, Soul Calibur probably has the biggest uh, casual crowd, just because it's Soul Calibur. But, again, not exactly a strong tournament community. And the fact of the matter is, like, regardless of how you look at it, every single person that becomes a tournament player... They started out as a casual fan. They started out as somebody who looked at something and went, you know what, that looks pretty cool, let me try it out. Then they end up really enjoying it. They end up delving really deeply into it. Next thing you know, they're coming to tournaments. So the simple fact of the matter is, if you want to grow your tournament community, you need that casual fan base. Sure, it's probably going to only be like one out of every 1,000 person, 1,000 people might consider coming to that tournament. But that's still, you know, if the game sells a million copies... Look how many people you just gained. That's a potentially a thousand more people inside of your uh, tournament community, throwing money into pots and whatnot. Like that's huge. And so you know you got to consider that that maybe the game may not have the executional difficulty you want or you expect, but you also have to ask: Does the executional difficulty really add anything to the game? Is it really necessary? And Almost every single time, I will argue, no, it is not. It, executional difficulty is a silly hindrance to playing a game. Now, there are times, obviously, like, you don't want something that, you know, like, infinites in a game that are incredibly easy to do. That you can just, like, alternate pressing two buttons. And you can alternate pressing those buttons by, like, a half second apart or something. Like, any time in between that half second, you have time to press the button and it'll do the combo for you. That kind of... Ex- easiness of execution i would never uh argue for but when it comes to just like hey man you want to play this character too bad their bnb has three one frame links in there fuck that fuck that bullshit throw it out the door get rid of it there's nothing good about that kind of system so you got to consider that as an argument but anyway that's enough about that Persona 4 Arena has 437 entrants. Now, granted, you can't expect a lot. You can't expect a lot of entrants for that game. It has been... It's never been hugely popular among the competitive crowd. Like, obviously, in terms of casual fans, just because of the Persona brand behind it, it's always sold the most copies. But in terms of people going out to tournament, it's never managed to reach the numbers of the other anime games. Uh, so it's not surprising that it's only gotten that much. Plus, it's uh, it's an old version, one many people already gave up long ago in order to move on to either Guilty Gear, Extend, Unil even. Uh, and again, like there's not there's not even any talk yet about 2.0 even coming to consoles, coming around anywhere. So a lot of people are just like, yeah, whatever, screw that series. Uh, and then Killer Instinct at the bottom with 397. Now part of me. Yeah, I really shouldn't say that I'm happy about it, but like I really don't like Killer Instinct as a game. It just looks so bad. It looks so oh, I don't like it. I don't like that it has kind of drawn a spotlight onto itself. I don't think it deserves it over other certain over other games. But obviously that that's very hipsterish of me. Like, yo, pay attention to my underground shit. Nobody ever heard of that mainstream stuff is bullshit like I, i'm not that's that's kind of what the argument sounds like to me and obviously that's a nonsense argument people are gonna like what they're gonna like if i don't personally like it i cannot begrudge the people that do like it if you enjoy killer instinct enjoy killer instinct i don't like a single bit of it uh but anyway so i don't again i don't want to get too much into that but it's still kind of like you know this is taking up an evo slot this is this is a game that i don't care for at all so it's kind of like Yay, it's not getting any entrance. Maybe it won't be there again. A better game will take its place. Woo! But then you also have to kind of think about, like, what other game is there? What are you going to throw it? Like, O'Neal? That would have gotten, like, 150 entrance. <laughs> Much as I love that game, nobody plays it anymore. Uh, but anyway, so moving on from that, the final topic. Battle Fantasia Revised Edition. One of Arc System Works' finest games. Uh... Unfortunately, a gem that was passed along, you know, the twinkle didn't catch anybody's eye. It was honestly probably the deepest game they've ever made. 
And it really is good to see this game coming out and given the chance it deserves. It's coming out on Steam. And so obviously Steam is a platform that is going to get it a lot of attention. Is going to... And then it's going to get, you know, it's due justice. It's going to get its limelight. Hopefully it'll probably end up taking Killer Instinct's place in Evil. That's a game that could easily take Killer Instinct's place. It had a very strong uh, kind of core fan group that really delved into the system. But they still never even scratched the surface of the depth of this game there's just so much potential behind it that I'm super excited that they have decided to spend their time on that and that being said what the fuck arc system works are you fucking kidding me none of what I said was true nobody liked that game nobody bought that game for a reason nobody plays that game for a reason you have Persona 4 Arena 2.0 already fucking made and it's nowhere to be seen. Nowhere. Not PC. Not console. Not Xbox One. Not PS4. Not we fucking you. Arcade only. A game that people would actually fucking buy. And you waste your goddamn time on Battle Fantasia? A game most people don't even know exists. And for good reason. I tried it out. A long time ago a long time ago because Gamefly had it and when I originally got Gamefly I went through their entire library of Xbox 360 games to look at it and to see what things have I missed what things look like that potential and I saw this oh it's a fighting game made by Arc System Works huh I really liked Calamity Trigger let me try that shit out it was awful horrible it looked like a PS2 game, number one, so already, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint, it doesn't have anything. It's like, yo, these graphics are godlike. They've obviously put effort into that. Let me check that out. They didn't have that. The game system itself was just, meh. You know, whatever. Nothing special about it. Nothing particularly interesting. Nothing to draw you in or make you think, wow, this is something that I really want to spend time learning and getting into and playing against other people. None of that. It has nothing going for it. And to see Arc System Works after how much I'm already down on them as a company. Like, if you could measure my interest in them as stocks, the market has crashed worse than ever before for me, for Arc System Works. Like, it was at an all-time high around the CS, CS2 era. Then CP 1.0 came around. It was like, damn, I'm really liking this. I didn't much care for CS Extend, but this is my jam. And then Kokonoe came out and it crashed a little bit, but then they fixed it with 1.1 and it went back up and it was, you know, coasting along. We were having fun. It was We were doing well. And then Evo passed and it was up again. It was like, holy crap, Blaze Blue's the best. Galileo vs. Dogra was amazing. Ride that hype train. And instead of riding the hype train, they announced CP Extend, which nobody cares. I don't want to say nobody cares about it, but very few people care about it. it, it it's not a game that a lot of people are feeling many pro players completely dropped it uh even more pro players that did not drop it completely changed their mains just to pick either hazama or new ironically dogura picked up both <laughs> that's extend for you um and it's, it's just like uh and then you know again the persona 4 arena fiasco is everything about them is like why do I even still bother paying attention to this company they obviously want nothing more than to just drive their business into the ground let them do it don't give them any fanfare just do you dog you you go ahead and hang yourself I'm cool with it I understand you want to be put out of your misery do it. it but still it's just it's that morbid fascination where it's just like god damn it what are they gonna do next what could they possibly do next that's worse than the previous decision and they answered it now we have to see what they do post evo because i mean let's be honest man if banana ken or anybody if any non-japanese player unfortunately this is kind of switching around on my whole yo let's not do you know the whole usa versus the world kind of a deal but simple fact is that's gonna happen especially in the anime games where you know the gap the gap between japan and the rest of the world is like 2009 street fighter 
where Daigo was an unbeatable monstrosity. But even then, Daigo was not an unbeatable monstrosity in Japan. Japan had all these unheard of monsters that were just waiting at the bottom of the lake, waiting for somebody to dip their toe in, and then just, you know, swarmed and slaughtered. But the only one we really saw, because the only one that was really traveling back around then, was uh, Daigo. Uh, But even then, you know, the gap was huge. Daigo was handling his business easily back then. And now, you know, the gap has closed quite a bit in Street Fighter, but that gap is still there in anime games. You know, last year, the Blaze Blue Finals, eight, uh, in the top eight, there was only one American, SG, and he got knocked out at seventh place. And the, everybody else is Japanese. The, it's there's a very, very significant gap between the top of Japan and the top of America. And but granted, I don't think America was truly represented very well, because I think uh, personally, my own opinion is that uh, crap. What's his name? Ooh, SKD. There we go. I think SKD is the best Blaze Blue player, and he was not in America, and he was not at Evo. So, um, you know, obviously that had to be a factor. You know, what what could he have potentially done if he was there? Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. But yeah, I don't think. I mean, it'll be. I unfortunately, I think Persona 4 Arena either could be the hypest tournament, one of the hypest tournaments there, or it could be an absolute dud, and it's entirely dependent upon what the top eight looks like. Because if the top eight is 100% Japanese people, the ballroom or wherever the hell they have the tournament is going to be dead. Nobody's going to be there. Uh, people probably won't watch it. They'll be like, oh, you know, whatever. Japan won. Surprise, surprise. Or there could be a lot of upsets similar to CEO, and people will tune in to see that shit, and people will, you know, really be invested in the tournament. And, we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Personally, I am of the opinion that Tahichi is going to annihilate everything in his path, especially if he picks Yukari. Because obviously Tahichi is kind of more well-known now for his Margaret, but nobody in America has Margaret experience. I, I mean, Margaret has uh, Yukiko experience. I guarantee... Is it Yukari? Yukari experience, not Yukiko. Yukari and honestly, I'm so, I really hope he does because I greatly enjoy watching Yukari, whereas I couldn't care less about watching uh, Margaret. So anyway, I have gone on for long enough, much longer than I intended to. Uh, but hey, ladies, I'm always much longer than intended. All right, anyway, bye. Shit, where's the button? Fuck, no, that wrong button.